Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is technically a Doctor Strange joint, but be honest, you're tuning in for the crazy Scarlet Witch action, and it's fine, there's no shame in admitting it. Wanda's journey has been one of the most fascinating in the MCU. I made mistakes. She's now one of the most powerful players, and her story is getting pretty twisted. But speaking of those powers, have you ever wondered how Marvel Studios pulled them off? No cuts, no butts, no coconuts. Well, stand back while we move our hands around in a vaguely mystical way, because it's time to conjure up some mind-boggling behind-the-scenes magic. We've seen plenty of magic in the MCU at this point, with multiple appearances from Wanda and Doctor Strange, and with the introduction of Shang-Chi. So we are familiar with the whole standing and performing arcane gestures with your hands approach to sorcery, but at the time of Joss Whedon's Avengers Age of Ultron, portraying these mystical superpowers on the big screen was new for Marvel. For most of Phases 1 and 2, the likes of Captain America, Hulk, and Thor had mainly all been variations on punching stuff really hard. One of the key aspects of getting Wanda right was nailing her physicality. On the comic book pages, the character does a lot of symbolic hand action, so the filmmakers had Elizabeth Olsen work with a dance coach so that her movements could be as dynamic and fluid as possible. The gestures may look kind of goofy without the CGI, but you can see how much Olsen was able to bring to the screen without the aid of special effects, making her powers very performance-driven. Though, naturally, CGI would be required. In the comics, Scarlet Witch has a whole bunch of increasingly wild powers. Flight, invisibility, telekinesis, reality manipulation, energy projection. It's actually probably quicker to list the abilities that she does not have. Obviously, when bringing her to the big screen, the filmmakers decided to streamline this laundry list of powers, at least in the early going. In Age of Ultron and Civil War, she's mainly messing with people's minds, moving things telekinetically and occasionally blasting some mystical energy around. And having established a physical vocabulary for Olsen, they needed to workshop how the magic was going to look. And the key? Loads of red. Creating what the VFX crew called Wanda's aura was a challenging process. Sometimes the impact of her red energy on the world around her is subtle. Sometimes it is not. So the CGI artists had to work out how to distort her surroundings in a consistent way. Often, the artists would add additional interactive light elements on top of the initial effects in order to integrate Wanda's magic fully with her environment. Oh, and do you remember at the end of Age of Ultron, when Wanda flies into shot at Avengers HQ? That was actually a reused visual effects plate from an earlier version of the movie, which was going to feature none other than Captain Marvel. You know, I gotta say, good to see these big productions recycling. Sustainability, my friends, is very, very important. The next time we see Wanda after Age of Ultron is in Captain America Civil War, and there have been a few changes since then. She's an Avenger in training, and her abilities have evolved, as we can see in the movie's big action sequences. Elizabeth Olsen has also clearly been rehearsing her mystical movements, which are a lot more intricate and controlled as she charges up her big Hadouken blasts. But of course it's not just about magic, flying, and kooky hand gestures. In terms of her character, we also see the beginnings of her relationship with Vision. This is one of the major romantic partnerships in the comic books. A union that goes off in all sorts of weird and wonderful directions. But these are the first seeds sown in the movies. It's all the usual meet cute kind of stuff. Talking about their feelings, eating dinner together, blasting each other through the roof with powerful psychic energy beams. Ah, oh, yeah, classic romance. For the actors, developing their connection came back to the character's most obvious link, the Infinity Stone that gives them both their strength. Elizabeth Olsen says that this was a key jumping off point when workshopping the relationship. And hey, sure, it's always nice to have something in common. Helps break the ice on the first date, even if that date is in the kitchen of Avengers HQ. WandaVision ended up doing a lot of heavy lifting in terms of the Wanda and Vision relationship, filling in some of the emotional blanks retroactively. 
It's understandable. Sometimes, in a series as big as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, not everything can get all the focus it needs. But it did feel a little odd to go from a fledging relationship in Civil War to a full-blown intense romance in Infinity War, but regardless, we think Olsen and Bettany sold it. And Vision, having to spend a bunch of the movie projecting the image of a normal human rather than a red synthesoid, yeah, that probably helped. Not that we're saying Wanda is shallow, but Come on, Bettany's a good-looking guy, and he probably enjoyed having a break from all those prosthetics. Infinity War ends up marking several emotional turning points for Wanda, as she becomes a big player on the battlefield and loses her lover before temporarily dying herself. Losing Vision to Thanos is really the beginning of her journey to becoming the grieving, all-powerful juggernaut she is today. With her progression as both a superhero and a person intertwining painfully and on the subject of powers. Both Infinity War and Endgame represent further major step ups in terms of Wanda's abilities. You can see from all the behind the scenes footage that Elizabeth Olsen did a lot more wire work and significantly more blue and green screen work here than in previous movies, as she takes her place in the chaos of war, blasting away at hordes of CGI monsters. Oh yeah, and then there's that small, small matter of destroying an Infinity Stone. That is a significant leap forward in strength, and even if the act immediately gets rewound by Thanos, it's still pretty impressive. No wonder the filmmakers took Wanda off of the table for most of Endgame. She probably have solved the whole thing in minutes. She's also the only character who really manages to overpower Thanos in Endgame's final battle, apart from maybe Captain Marvel. At this point, the filmmakers really start to go all in on Wanda as a traumatized Omega-level badass, something that promises to reach its apex in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. You probably remember this scene from the climax of Endgame, the famous, arguably infamous moment where all of the women of the MCU stand shoulder to shoulder and march into battle with Captain Marvel. Not everybody loved it, with some saying that it felt a bit cheap and tokenistic, though for others, it was a welcome sight with all the female superheroes fighting as one. Whatever your take, on a technical level, and on a level of just getting loads of famous actresses together in one place, it was quite an achievement. Of course, not all of Wanda's journey has taken place on the big screen. A crucial period of her life has been chronicled on streaming, with her starring vehicle WandaVision on Disney+. Plus. It was one of viewers' most prominent questions after Endgame. With the Avengers effectively disbanded, Vision and her brother dead, and no grand cosmic threat looming, where would someone as powerful and damaged as Wanda go? You could even argue that it was kinda irresponsible of her mentor, Captain America, to just head off into the past and leave her in the present, but that's an argument for a future video. Maybe we'll call it, is Cap secretly kinda selfish? Kevin Feige and the gang wanted an appropriately out there concept for Wanda's own series. WandaVision was kind of trial by fire for the cast. Everybody was told to watch old episodes of I Love Lucy and other retro sitcoms, and for each TV era portrayed in the show, the actors had to be trained to switch between different acting and movement styles. Comedy icon Dick Van Dyke was even brought in to help them capture the authentic vibe. Authenticity was the production's watchword, in fact, and they took that all the way. Even going as far as shooting the first episode in front of a live studio audience, just like a real sitcom. Paul Bettany is on record as describing it as rewarding but nerve-wracking, which just about sums it up, really. Elizabeth Olsen seemed to find it nerve-wracking, too. The actress had already done plenty of theater work, but she said that acting in front of a live TV audience was quite surreal for her. After all, as the younger sister of famous twins Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, she spent a lot of time on the set of Full House as a small kid, watching her sisters performing, never for one second imagining that she'd be doing the same thing one day. As well as being a departure for cast and crew, WandaVision represents another major evolution for the character of Wanda. We've been calling her Scarlet Witch throughout this video, but in terms of MCU canon, the Disney Plus series is the first time that she comes to understand and embrace that heritage and the title as she battles Agatha Harkness for dominance. The show also illustrates quite how far Wanda's powers have come. Peeling off chunks of Thanos' armor in Endgame? Oof, that's nothing. In this show, she manipulates an entire town and the minds of everyone in it. Oh, as well as resurrecting her dead lover and creating a pair of super-powered kids from nothing. Scarily powerful, yeah. And morally, kinda dubious? We hate to say it, but by the end of WandaVision, poor old Wanda was looking more and more like a villain in waiting. 
Which brings us to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Behind the scenes info is still pretty limited for this, as we won't be seeing the full movie until May, but based on what we do know, Wanda is going to have a pretty prominent role as Stephen Strange tries to fix his own magical mistakes by bringing on the other most powerful person he knows. We can't help but thinking that recruiting a grieving, traumatized, omega-level chaos witch might just be another mistake to add to the list, huh there, Stephen? So how powerful is Wanda? We've certainly seen her pull off some pretty wild stuff in the MCU so far, but that's nothing compared to the comics, where she is literally the anchor for the whole of our reality. Can't wait to see how they visualize that on screen. 